Just a quick video to show you a new tool that I've got and how to set it up. This is called the Craig Rip Cut and it's designed to help you make long rip cuts down plywood boards. I'll put it to good use in the timber yard when I go to buy big plywood sheets, which is much more economic than buying the small project boards. However, I've hit a spot in this particular project where I need to make a cut that's decently long, longer than the straight edge that I was using previously, and I also want to make it quite narrow, which is exactly what this tool should do. So let's see how quickly and easily we can put this thing together and make the first cut with it. Step one, that's the guide. This is going to be your measuring ruler. The guide's going to be what runs along the edge of your cut, and we're going to screw these two bits together. This can be done in left or right-handed configuration as on my righty. I'm going to set it up in the regular way, having the guide running along the left. These are self-tapping screws, so they're going to be a little bit firm because they're cutting their own threads as they go. Lovely, step one. So we can see that runs nice and smoothly along the flat edge. The next thing is you have to check your circular saw. On the Makita, I've got a flat edge. However, the sled for the Craig jig comes with this little raised platform here for saws that have a lip on them. As I don't have it, I need to reverse it. So you're gonna to have to check yours to see if this is a step for you. Two second job flat on flat. Otherwise, if I hadn't taken that off, that's going to be raising up the blade and you'll have a less accurate cut. Easy step, that one. Next, we need to loosen these two mounts. So just grab your screwdriver, quickly take those off so they can swing freely over the sled. Now you have to make a decision on what type of blade you have. Yeah, that one came all the way off. And back in there. Mine on the Makita is a left mount blade. So I'm gonna be using the left slot. If you're on the other side, then you'll be using the right slot. I am also, because this Makita has this plastic guide on the front, I'm actually gonna take that off because otherwise this is gonna screw into it and it might damage it. And I may need to use it again one day. So that comes off like that put that in a safe place. We also want to remove this little referencing guide. You'll see what it's used for momentarily. So don't put that too far away. You want to position your saw in the middle of, in my case, the left slot. Make sure that your guard still works quickly and effectively. Now we can swing these bits over. Make sure we've maintained the position of the saw in the middle of the run and hard up against that leading edge and find a good spot for these clamps. There we go. Now I've got a nice wide base on this circular saw so I can use the wider option and it is recommended by Craig that you use the wider of the two. However, if your circular saw is smaller, you can shift these ones over just a little bit. Next, we're gonna move this guide. So it's on the right hand side at the moment, which is the wrong one. So if I just push down gently on here, that'll slide off. And I can re-thread it, I hope, on this side. Also a good time to check to make sure that your safety guide still works cleanly. And we're nearly there. Now we're gonna reinstall this reference block. It was on the right side, again, I'm doing this on the left, so I need to move it over. And what this block is going to do is allow me to save the position of the saw. Obviously I don't want it on the jig at all times, I'm gonna to need to take it off. So when I take it off, I won't have to worry about all this muddle and setup because I'll know exactly where it should be by pressing it against here. So this is a one-time stop maneuver. There we go. So if I unscrew those, take it off, I can slide it back in the same spot. Now the saw is securely attached to the sled. We can lift this flap if you haven't done so already. And it's going to, see that T-track in there? 
that T-track is going to slide onto your guide. Like so. That will then function as the lock for later on. Now we have to see how small a cut we can do. That's as far over as I can get. But we can see that I am well, truly in the not recommended cutting area. So we're not gonna worry about that too much. Don't wanna cut down there. The smallest cut is gonna be at that point. But we need to align the blade with this or it's not gonna be accurate now, is it? Time to make a first test cut and align my blade. I have set that to exactly three centimeters. So what I wanna figure out is where the blade cuts in relation to that red line. So I've locked it down. We'll make a test cut in the scrap ball that I've clamped down, measure it, and then we'll be able to adjust that red uh, little sliding marker there to actually be cutting in line with the blade. I had to build a guard up there because I'd set that blade so shallow that it couldn't even push it through properly. All I want is to measure this line because it's meant to be three centimeters and we'll see what the difference is. So I've got my square set to three centimeters and we can see that I am in fact only cutting 2.5 centimeters from the edge of the board. Now 2.5 is actually the dead set minimum that Craig recommends you cut. It even says not recommended on there. So now, one more bump. There we go, it's even easier than that because I've got the line there. I can just line them up. Bit of glare, you might not be able to quite see it, but I can. Tough little bastard to move though. There we go. So now I'm in line with the blade. Excellent. I can now unlock this. I can set it to any size of cut I want to make. And when I lock it back down, I know that cut's going to be exactly 257 millimeters. Well, there you have it. That's a quick tutorial on how to set up your Craig Rip Cut jig. I'm hopefully going to get a lot of use out of it when I'm cutting up plywood sheets, as I said, but also, when I was making my router table, which is I paused that video to make this one, so I needed to set this up, it's gonna let me cut smaller, accurate rips, as the name would imply. As I don't have a table saw, this is gonna be really, really good. Now, I think it was about $70. Uh, I got it again from Cabtech, uh, Cabartech, and it came very, very quickly. I'm liking how it feels. It seems sturdy, just like the other Craig stuff that I've got. Uh, I got onto Craig as usual through woodworking for mere mortals. They sponsor Steve over there and I'm glad that they do because um, I do like their products so far. So YouTube advertising works, funnily enough. Time for a real world example. Here is a bunch of lumber which I picked up. Now let's see if we can use the Craig Rip Cut to make it fit in the back of my station wagon. All right, I'm at my local lumber store, North Shore Timber and Hardware here in Chatswood. And it's the first time I'm going to get to use my Craig Rip Cut on a sheet of ply. That's 9mm MDF, which is going to be for a toy box project I'm making for my nephew for Christmas. And the way that I've set it up is I've got two old bedroom runners underneath supporting the cut and a few other little bits of wood. I know I need a 15 inch cut off my plan, so I'm going just a bit proud of that. And I'm going to be able to run, hopefully, the track all the way down so that it will fit in the back of the station wagon. Let's see how we go. Well, that was pretty epic. I got caught right at the very end because my runners weren't quite long enough and I started to drift just a tiny bit there. But here's my setup underneath. Got the two bedroom runners and now I'll measure it when I get home, but at least it'll fit in the car. That's a win for the Craig Rip Cut. Well, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this quick little distraction from the usual project work in order to set up a new tool. And you'll see this put to use in the near future. Well, the very near future, in fact, because as soon as I turn the camera off, I'm gonna get back to cutting up the router table fence. See you next time.